So this week, we're talking about the passion of the church. Now, I personally think that the church has lost its passion. In Revelation chapter 2, it talks about the fact Jesus tells that church, you've lost your first love. I have this against you. You've lost your first love. We need to get back to that place of being in love with God, be, having a passion for his purpose, have a passion for his ways, have a passion for his kingdom. Amen. So Jesus taught us six different ways. In fact, probably more than that, but I'm going to demonstrate six different ways that Jesus taught us to keep the fire alive, to keep the passion going. First of all, we talked about it. Jesus knows you're better off young. And we need to have our minds renewed to being youthful and aggressive and excited about what's happening. And then Jesus, number two, Jesus knows you're better off dead. In other words, we need to die to self, deny self. Why? So that Christ can live his life out through us. Number three was Jesus knows you're better off dependent. We need to be dependent on him. We were never meant to be independent. I know as kids, we're always fighting that for our independence. But we need to be dependent on God. He is our very source. He is our breath. Take the breath of life away and you're in trouble. That We get our, our life through that breath. It comes from God. We need to be dependent on him. And then we also covered yesterday, we need to be connected to him. We need to daily wake up in the morning, get excited, start off the day fresh with God. We can visit the president of the universe, the creator of everything. Every morning he's waiting for us if we'll just get up and spend some time with him. Amen. Today I want to tell you that Jesus knows you're better off focused. The only people I know who are sustainable, positive, long-term joy and passionate are people with one thing in common. They believe God has amazing plans for tomorrow. Now Jeremiah 29 11, we all know it. God says, I know my plans towards you. They're one of good and not evil. Plans to prosper, prosper you. Now Notice what it says there. It says that I know my plans towards you. It doesn't say I know your plans that you have. But so many of us, what we do is we create this life based upon what we want, what we think is best for us. Never going to God, never finding out why. Because we've lost our passion. We've lost our focus. And what we've done is we've tried to make a life on our own. And as soon as we get in trouble, we run to God and say, God bless this. God bless this. Well, he blessed that plan that he has for you and I and it's yours and my responsibility to find his plan for us because it's there that the blessing lies. Amen. Um, f future focus creates passion. In other words, if I know tomorrow something's going to happen. If I know that I've got a destiny ahead of me, if I can just keep reaching forward, keep moving forward, it creates a passion in me. Amen. Uh, psychology says this, what a person believes about their future is more important than anything that has happened in their past or anything that is happening in their present. See, in your past, Satan wants to mess with you. He wants to tell you, you loser, look what you did back there. Um, you were a worm. God has your future. He says, I know my plans for you. They're one of a hope and future and a hope and so forth. He's in the future. Our present right now, sometimes we just get so bogged down with focusing what's going on, and yet there's another tomorrow. Every morning, uh, uh, it's new, it's exciting. Begin to start looking forward and quit looking at the past. Remember, Paul said this in Philippians. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, I'm, yeah, it's um, Philippians chapter 2. 3 verse 13 and 14 it says I I forget those things in the past and I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus that's what we need to do keep our focus we've talked about this in the past keep our focus on the on the finish line 
not be distracted by the flags and the lights and the horns and all the rest of the stuff around us. Keep our focus on where we're going. Also, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. See, he saw the joy. It wasn't the cross at what was on the other side of the cross, but he endured the cross in order for him to get to what was on the other side. He stayed focused. And you and I need to be focused on God's plan in our life and stay close to him. The Bible says those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. We need to be led by his Spirit. Stay focused on that, friend. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. I love you. Jesus loves you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.